This section explains how to install Gemini. Double-click Gemini Setup. Close all other applications and click Next. The license agreement will be displayed. Read the contents and click I agree. The notice regarding the handling of personal data will be displayed. Read the contents and click I agree. The notice regarding the maintenance service will be displayed. Read the contents and click I agree. Select the folder in which to install Gemini and click Install. Confirm shortcut creation and file association, select the checkboxes, and click Next. Installation is now complete. Click Finish. This is the end of the instruction on the installation. This section explains how to activate the Gemini license. Double-click the Gemini icon. The Gemini Activation Guide will be displayed. Click Next. Select a license. There are two types of licenses, standalone and network licenses. Select the standalone license and click Next. Enter the product key and click Next. When license settings are complete, click Finish. Gemini will start. This is the end of the instruction on how to activate a license. This section explains Gemini's user interface. The Gemini's user interface consists of several elements. Tools and commands are available by selecting menu tabs. E-Catalog contains the components that make up the model. Expand Models by Type. Expand Layouts Tree and click Layouts. Move the mouse cursor over Collections and scroll the field. Drag and drop machine tending into the 3D world. Components can be placed from E-Catalog. Cell Graph displays the current 3D world layout in list format. The output window displays progress messages during processing and the processing results. In the Properties window, you can edit the properties of the selected component. The simulation control bar at the top of the 3D world enables the user to start, stop, and reset the simulation, adjust the speed, and export the animation. The view selector in the lower left corner of the 3D world and the floating origin in the upper left corner switch the viewpoint in the 3D world. The 3D world toolbar enables the user to change component display method. The 3D world can be reset by the following steps. First, select the File tab. Next, select Clear All. All components displayed on the 3D world are deleted. This is the end of the explanation of Gemini's user interface. This section explains how to use Help. Select the Help tab. By selecting the Help icon, Help file will be displayed. Help file can be searched by using the table of contents or by keywords. Expand the hierarchy for the table of contents and click on the child hierarchies. 
Enter a keyword to search, then double-click on an item in the list of search results. This is the end of the instruction on how to use help. This section explains eCatalog. Return to the Home tab. eCatalog has two classifications, models by type and models by manufacturer. In models by type, components are classified by component type and further classified by manufacturer. In models by manufacturer, components are classified by manufacturer and further classified by component type. This is the end of the explanation of eCatalog. This section explains the 3D World Toolbar. When multiple components are placed in the 3D world, select the All, Ctrl plus F icon at the top of the 3D world toolbar to display all components. By selecting the Fill Selected icon, the selected component will be scaled to fit within the screen. By selecting the Headlight icon, the light is emitted from the direction of the viewpoint. Selecting the Render Mode icon shows the list of component display methods, and you can select one of the display methods. Selecting the Frame Types icon shows the list of frames on the 3D world, and frames can be switched to display or hide. By selecting the Position Frame Display Options icon, the frame's axes and labels can be switched to display or hide. By selecting the View Editor icon, the current viewpoint position can be saved. This is the end of the explanation of the 3D World Toolbar. This section explains how to change the viewpoint on the 3D World. The mouse can be used to change the viewpoint. Dragging the mouse while right-clicking can rotate the viewpoint. Clicking both the right and left buttons and dragging the mouse can translate the viewpoint. Dragging the mouse while clicking the mouse wheel can also translate the viewpoint. Rotating the mouse wheel can zoom in and out of the viewpoint. Place the cursor over a component on the 3D world and right-click to open a menu. Selecting Center in 3D view from the menu sets the selected component at the center of the viewpoint. The view selector can also be used to change the viewpoint. Left-clicking the T, R, F, L, or B icon in view selector changes the viewpoint to a specified direction or angle. Clicking the T icon sets the viewpoint above the 3D world. Double-clicking the icon sets the viewpoint below the 3D world. Clicking between or around the edges of the view selector icons also changes the viewpoint. This is the end of the instruction on how to change the viewpoint in the 3D world. This section explains how to select and move components. Operations to select components are as follows. Select the Select icon. When selecting a component, the selected component will be highlighted. Dragging the mouse while clicking can select a range. All components in the range are selected. 
multiple components can be selected by selecting components while holding down the control key. This is the end of the instruction on how to select components. Operations to move components are as follows. Click the move icon. When clicking a component, arrows and planes will be displayed. The component can be moved by dragging the arrow or plane. Dragging the red arrow moves the component along the x-axis. Dragging the green arrow moves it along the y-axis. Dragging the blue arrow moves it along the z-axis. Dragging the red plane moves the component with the x-axis fixed. Dragging the green plane moves it with the y-axis fixed. Dragging the blue plane moves it with the z-axis fixed. Dragging the curve changes the angle of the component. The red curve can change the angle around the x-axis. The green curve can change the angle around the y-axis. The blue curve can change the angle around the z-axis. Dragging the pink circle moves the component freely. This is the end of the instruction on how to select and move components. This section explains how to operate the simulation control bar. Clicking the play button on the control bar starts the simulation. Adjust the speed of the simulation with the seek bar located between plus and minus on the right side. During simulation, the play button changes to the pause button. Clicking the button pauses the simulation. Clicking the reset button on the left of the play button can reset the state of the 3D world. This is the end of the instruction on how to operate the simulation control bar. This is the end of the explanation of the basic operations of Gemini. Thank you for watching.